Hi, this is Dan from userspice.com and I'm here to give you an in-depth look into what is different between UserSpice 4.0 and 4.1. Um, one of the things that you need to know is that there's nothing wrong with sticking with 4.0. It's a great package, there's no problems with it. If there are any security vulnerabilities that pop up, we'll be patching them and doing things like that. But 4.1 is really the future. So if you're building something new, I highly recommend that you start with 4.1 and so I want to give you a little bit of a tour, a little bit more of an in-depth tour as to what is different. And so if we come in here and look at what you would download, you'll see that the, the folder structure is a little bit different and we really did not want to change the folder structure a lot, but we had to. This is 4.0, this is 4.1 beta. One of the biggest differences that you'll find is if you go in here to this users folder, we have this vendor and this is Composer. Composer is a really cool dependency manager that allows you to install something like 50,000 different packages including the mailing thing that we were using before. The problem is almost no one used it and so basically our package was two-thirds bigger than it needed to be and two-thirds more complicated than it needed to be because we included Composer and so we're gonna we've pulled that out for 4.1 and we're going to offer it as a separate download and so now you get rid of a lot of that heft so if I were to come in here and just just right click now let's not take those pages but let's say if I right click all this stuff you can see that actually installed this is nine megabytes and installed this one here is 3.37 megabytes so you're talking a big difference in space um, just for features that really nobody was using so the package is a lot smaller um, when you get into the bootstrap navigation and stuff like that I'll show you a little bit more on the tour but um, one of the things that we did was there was a lot of just wasted white space there were a lot of divs that never got closed and stuff like that on the old version this is 4.0 and there was just just this extra space around here and things were chunkier than they needed to be and they weren't necessarily as responsive as they needed to be we cleaned a lot of that up when we did uh, user spice 4.1 you're always welcome to change it you can do whatever you want with it but the point is we cleaned up a lot of the bootstrap stuff and just made the whole UI cleaner if you come in here and log in I'm gonna log into both of them which actually I might already be logged into both of them let's see I might have to do one of these in incognito mode. So this is 4.0.0 by the way. I cannot log in. Gotta let the recapture do its thing. There we go. So um, you can see this is the old 4.0.0 dashboard. Nothing wrong with it, but just a lot of white space uh, taken up. There were no real statistics or anything like that. As you go into 4.1, uh, you'll see the dashboard has more statistics, more stuff going on, but also um, it'll respond better. It'll everything will just stack neater as you as you get into smaller screens and and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just neater overall, and we basically brought it all back to one page. We got rid of the tabs and uh, and just made it cleaner. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that would happen is if you were to I'll go ahead and log out here. If you were to log out in 4.0 and sign back in and you got your name right and your password right, but you didn't hit the recaptcha, you just got no feedback there to what was going on. Or it, At times you would get error messages, times you wouldn't. We fix that kind of stuff. As you log out here, you'll notice that if I log in, I hope this works. <laughs> There's the recaptcha's turned off. Um, but anyway, you would get it, you just get better feedback. So if I do admin, and don't put a password, it's going to say, please fill out this field. And if I try to log in anyway, it's going to just keep giving me the feedback that I need to tell me what in the world it is that I did that was, was messed up. Um, the real magic happens in the path handling, though. What happened in the old version, and, and probably our biggest issue that we had with uh, installs, was getting your path right. And so I'm going to hope there's nothing important in here. So if I go to my core and my init, I'll see that I had to come in here and manually tell this thing that I was installed into US4 directory. If this was wrong and I had to do it twice, if this was wrong, I did it four times in this one, then the project would just not work. You'd get these weird redirects and all that kind of stuff. And, and because of that, we also had to manage two different menus and so if you go in the users folder here and you go into includes you'll see that we had front end and user spice and in the beginning the thought was 
that basically we would manage all this, all the user spice, this is your header, your footer, your menus, your navigation, all that kind of stuff. Um, the thought was that the user spice team would manage that and then the front end user would manage this. The problem was as you started building things in other directories and all that kind of stuff, it just got really messed up. And so what we've done with the new one is we have one set of includes. There's one header, one footer, um, and all of that kind of stuff. And it's the same regardless of if you're in the quote unquote back end of user spice or the front end of user spice. And what makes that happen is this file right here. It's this Z root folder. And I have to give all props to user Brian from user spice. He figured out a lot of this stuff. It's always been a thorn in our side, just determining where everything went. He put this whole hackery together that basically allows user spice to know without you telling it where it is. So in other words, I could rename this folder from beta to release because it really is the release version and nothing would break. And so all of your links now can be relative. So what you'll see is if I bring up, um, if I if I come in here, instead of putting a, a link, just a normal link, let me go to navigation. Um, what you have here is instead of putting just putting logo.png, I can put this U US URL root. And basically what that does is that allows this link to work no matter what folder user spice happens to be installed in. So you could have um, you could have this on your test server in the folder called beta on your WAMP install, and then you could just copy the whole thing over to your DreamHost server to www.userspicepro.com, and it's just going to work. And that is a really cool feature. Um, we are documenting that on userspice.com so you can get a little bit better understanding of how it all works. But it is magic, and it works really well. Um, one of the other things that we had requested was the ability to allow people to log in via username or password. And so if you come in here to user spice, you'll notice that now in user spice 4.1, you can just choose whichever one you want. You can log in. So I, I really don't remember it. I guess we could show you. Um, so if I go to localhost PHP, my admin and come into the beta thing, I can check my users and see that this one is userspicephp at gmail.com. So just as I was adding logging in with admin, I can also put userspicephp um, at gmail.com. And bam, I am logged in just the same. I'm still in the admin account. And so that's a really cool feature, just often requested from people that we would that we would fix that and offer that. Um, another thing we put in just kind of as a, as a test uh, to show you how to do it is this whole idea of a public profile. And now if you edit the bio, you get this WYSIWYG editor and there's some instructions on making that pop up anywhere you want. So basically, if you want your users to be able to have a profile, they can come in here and they can go in the WYSIWYG editor, update their profile, and now it'll be right there. Um, let's see what else. So we have the more powerful admin dashboard. We have this stuff where you can see how many people are logging in per hour, per day, per week, per month. You can see what IP addresses. Now I'm on localhost, so I'm not getting them. But when you're on a live server, you'll actually get the IP address that your users logged in from. So if there's some kind of hackery going on, you can try to figure out what's going on. We still have the ability to track guests, but we, um, we're giving new, uh, new information here. It tells you that in the last 30 minutes, there was one unique visitor, um, regardless of whether they signed in or not. And so we've just kind of cleaned this stuff up, added a little bit more statistics. Uh, we're telling you the version number here so you know that you're on the latest version. One of the biggest issues we had was that if you wanted to do something like modify one of our core pages, let's just say the admin page, and let's say you didn't like the way that we did all of our, of our stuff. If you wanted to add more statistics, you wanted to add new options and all of that kind of stuff. If we went in there and found a security vulnerability in our original admin.php file, then what would happen was we would push out an update and that update would overwrite your admin.php file and you would lose all your changes. So we wanted to do something better. What we decided to do was go in here and modify this function that needs to be on every single page anyway. And it's the if secure page um, if it's a secure page and you don't have the right permissions to be there, kill the page. So what we did is we told it, look for this a page with the same name, admin.php, but look for it in this folder. 
this user's SC folder. And so what happens is if you decide that you want to make your own admin.php file, you don't modify ours anymore. You basically copy the admin.php file over and you're going to make a couple little changes to it, which we'll document. And all of a sudden, when someone tries to go to this admin.php file, if it sees that you have one in the user's C, which stands for user's custom, then what happens is you're allowed to just create this page. You can do whatever you want here, make it exactly the way you want it. And whenever somebody tries to go here, they'll just automatically be redirected toward yours and have no idea that they're anywhere different. And so it's a really cool thing. It allows us to update this page without breaking changes that you make over here. And speaking of that, while we're in the custom area, there's also this thing, these scripts that we allowed. And, and we realized that some people want to do some specific things to the database. They want to run a script right after someone logs in or right after someone logs out. Maybe you want to update some statistics or something like that. We put these custom scripts in here where just as someone logs in or just before, just after they log out, you can run some scripts there. So anyway, that's something you really want to check out. You really want to use right. Um, there's just cool stuff going on. I hope you enjoy it. Um, we're going to keep making changes. We're going to keep doing things better and better. Check out userspice.com for the latest information, the latest bug fixes. We love answering questions in the forum. Introduce yourself in the forum. Talk to us in the forum. Just get to know the people that made this program because they love it and they love the people who use it. And so share your creations. Do creative stuff with it. Just love it.